Hey, it's Alex here from alexfergus.com and today I have my full review of the Advantage 1500 by Red Light Rising. Now in this review I'm going to be looking at everything from price to EMF to power radiance to my thoughts and feedback after using this panel for the last few weeks. We're going to compare it to some other panels in the market both from Red Light Rising and from its competitors and um, I'm going to run through my likes and dislikes. So stay tuned and we're going to take a deep dive into figuring out how good this panel really is. Let's go. Hey, so behind me I have the Advantage 1500 by Red Light Rising. Now Red Light Rising is a UK based company. They have been in the red light therapy space for a few years now. Uh, founded by a couple of very passionate uh, biohackers. I've met them both and um, yeah, they're, they're both switched on guys and so the founders are not only very clued up and experienced in the red light therapy space, but they also are well versed on all things health and wellness. And in fact, their website, redlightrising.co.uk, you can now go on and buy other biohacking and health related products, which is very cool. Now, um, this Advantage 1500 is part of the new, new and improved uh, elite range that Red Light Rising have brought to the market, I think it was last year. So previously they had their handheld devices, I think it was the Red Light Rising Mini, and uh, their body panel, which was called the Full Stack Panel. Now that Full Stack Panel actually placed third in my 2019 uh, Red Light Therapy Body Panel comparison. So it was, it was a good panel, it was quite unique. Um, it was more on the basic side, you know, it didn't have modular capability. Um, you know, the numbers overall were, were good, uh, that's why it placed third overall. But this new series, the Advantage series here, is the new improved, has a few more bells and whistles, is meant to have a lot more power, um, it's obviously a lot larger. Uh, so I'm really excited to see how it stands up in um, my testing today. Red Light Resin is still offering their base um, full stack panel, uh, which is obviously a lot cheaper and hopefully I'll get around to testing that later on. So be sure to subscribe and if you want to see more about that. Now before we get into the key specs and features and then the testing on this on this uh, Advantage 1500, I should mention that Red Light Rising have three models in their Advantage line. This is the mid-range model uh, at 500 LEDs. They also have a smaller one, the Advantage 900 with 300 LEDs and then they've got this extremely large the Advantage XL with 1600 LEDs, which is massive. I mean, it's it's unheard of, uh, I think. Well, I don't know of any other panels that big. But anyway, today we're looking at this panel. Okay, so let's look at price. Now, being a UK-based company, most of the prices on their website are in British pounds, and they include local um, taxes. You can set the currency or location to America, and uh, you'll get a USD price without all the British taxes. So that is what I've done and those are the figures I'm going to relay to you. Now of course if you want prices in your currency head over to redlightrising.co.uk and you can find out the prices in your currency for your uh, country. So first things first, the Advantage 1500 with no discounts retails at $2,781. Yes that's right, it's nearly $3,000. Now that is a big chunk of money and that does make it one of the more expensive panels that I have reviewed and tested. Um, we do have a discount code, it is Alex, A-L-E-X, and that will save you 5%. If for some reason that doesn't work, check out the description below in case that code has changed. So that will save you 5%, which is, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks, and that's that's handy, especially when, when you are spending this much money. That brings the price down to $2,642. US Now for shipping, if you're in the UK or most of the European Union, shipping is free, which is great. Outside of the UK and Europe, then you're looking at anything from about $25 up to $40. So it's $25 to ship it to the US, Canada, Australia. I put some random countries in there like Nepal and stuff and it was about $40. So that's really good uh, shipping rates. I know they used to have free worldwide shipping, but um, just due to the current craziness and, and shipping and whatever, um, they've had to put a little price on there. But still, for a you know, a panel this big, uh, you know, you can't complain, $25, $30, which is pretty good. So, if you're in the US and you're using discount code Alex to save you the 5% and paying for shipping, overall you're going to pay $2,667 US, US dollars. And yes, they do offer our financing plans over at redlightrising.co.uk as well. Now, if you order one of these panels, 
You're going to be quite impressed with the package that arrives at your door. Not only does the box have the Red Light Rising logo on it, you've got some really cool stickers on there, you've got the Red Light Rising tape, and when you open it all up, you get some nice little uh, info sheets and flyers that are, uh, you know, help you help you get started right away. So that is one cool thing about the Red Light Rising. I I haven't seen that level of um, brand packaging uh, in any of these panels before. I suppose Juve is up there, but you know, the stickers and the custom tape, I thought was a nice little touch. Saying that, you are spending a lot of money, so you kind of expect a, a few uh, niceties when it comes to unboxing and the overall uh, experience using and purchasing this panel. So now let's look at the look and feel of the Red Light Rising Advantage 1500. So this is a larger panel than my typical body panel. In fact, with 500 LEDs, this makes it what I class as a mega panel. So I have my handheld panels, um, my small panels, or my mini panels, body panels, and then the mega panels. It is 44 inches tall. Oh, so I'm lifting that from the floor here. 44 inches tall, which puts it about 1.1 meters high, 1.12 meters high. Um, most panels, in that body panel range, you know, your Biomax 600s and, and uh, your Juice Solars, 30 centimeters, 20 to 30 centimeters shorter than this. So you, you are getting a little bit more length. On the weight front, it comes in at 25 pounds, which is about 11, 11 and a half kilos. And that just makes it on the lighter side for a panel with this many LEDs. I mean, still, it's, it's quite heavy, but you are getting a big panel. But I mean, some panels, some smaller, you know, three, four hundred, or three hundred LED panels come in around that weight. Uh, so, so that that does you know make it good, I guess. There are no grips or handhelds, hand holding points on the back or on the sides, which is a bummer, especially as it is a little bit larger. You do get these chunky uh, black rubber feet. Uh, speaking of black, obviously it is a black design, and I do like that. I think it. It stands out quite nicely, um, especially compared to your regular white panels. Solid metal casing on front, back and sides. You have some etching on the side here with the Red Light Rising branding. On the back you have one, two, three, four, five, six fans. And um, you've got a couple of power points and your main power switch uh, on the back as well. One thing um, I will comment on is the power switch is a little bit higher than usual. I'd say most around the middle. Now, after using red light therapy panels uh, for many years now, I've actually found, I personally prefer the, the switch at least, oh, the switch and the power point, sorry. I prefer them to be quite low on the panel. Most of them are either in the middle or up reasonably high. And I guess that makes sense when you're looking at it from a design point of view. And obviously when I'm sitting here on the floor next to it, yeah, it's a, it's a good height. But if you think about it, these panels are typically hanging, right? So hanging quite high off the ground, you know, let's say I want to get full head coverage, it might be this high. At the moment, I'm, I'm kneeling on the ground, but if I were to be standing, you know, that's going to be about one and a half, 1.8 meters above the ground, right? So yes, that means the switch is quite high, you're reaching around, not a deal breaker, but you know, it's, it's a little bit further to reach. But the main thing is with the cable, um, it's further length that you need in that cable because of course if this is one and a half meters high the cable needs to get one and a half meters just to get to the ground now if there's not a power point right there and your cable is only one and a half or let's say two meters you're going to use extension cords so i don't know just something i thought i'd mention i haven't mentioned that before in any of my other reviews it was really only the other day i i thought you know what these would be better down nice and low when we were looking at the back there you would have noticed that there were multiple power plugs and also some other plugs on the back. Those are there because this panel does support modular capability. So that means you can get more of these panels, either in this size or smaller, attach them on top or side by side and connect them all up and just have one control panel, which is um, one of the new features that the Advantage has over their previous full stack panels. Of course, the modular support now has been around for a while. Um, but Red Light Rising didn't have that function uh, before the Advantage panels came out. And you may also notice that the LED cases here are quite small and quite compact. Um, the chip inside, the chip, the, the LED diode inside is the same. The, <coughs> some people see these smaller um, bulbs and think, oh, it's a smaller LED. It's not. It's just the actual case. It's just think of a think of a light bulb in your in your 
on your ceiling, right? The filament inside or the LED chip is, you know, a certain size, but the bulb itself, you can get small bulbs or larger bulbs. It's the same with these, right? So Red Light Rising do have the smaller bulb design, um, which makes it look a little bit different compared to, you know, your Biomax or your Juve, which have the, the larger face. Also, these bulbs um, do protrude, protrude a little bit from the case. So if you look at this side on, you'll see they stick out, you know, maybe two or three mils. And if you run your hand along the front, you can feel and hear that bumpiness as well. Um, because this panel does have 500 LEDs, because of that smaller case design, it means, it means you can actually get more LEDs into a smaller area. Because if, if they'd use the, the standard flat, uh, wider LED bulb casing, I don't know what the technical term is, this panel would have to be much larger to fit it all in. So that's going to make things interesting when we do test the power and especially the total power output over the size. Because uh, with this many LEDs in a concentrated um, area, you, you should be starting to see some big numbers coming through. So I'm really excited to see those power readings, <coughs> which we'll test very soon. Overall though, from a design point of view, I think it's nice, it looks good, um, it's nice and sleek in the black, the little LEDs actually make it, I think, look quite unique and, and a bit different to all the other panels I have here in my home. Um, and the mod modular support, the rubber feet on the back, metal, metal design and the etching uh, on the side are all good additions as well. Shame that it doesn't have the, the grips, especially as, as it is a larger panel, but um, I guess you can't have it all. Well, hopefully one day we can have it all. So what do you get in the box with your Advantage 1500? Well, you get quite a heavy gauge power cable you get the extension cables if you are going to use a modular support so I won't be needing these today you get the door hanging kit which is your metal cables that screw onto the top you also have a door hook here uh, now this is a slightly different design to the regular door hooks we see you'll see here this has got a, a screw that can tighten up or change the, the width. Um, I often remark about this because none of the door hooks will fit over my doors here in this home, so I haven't been able to use them. This one though, because of this screw, which I've over tightened, I can actually, I think I'll be able to use it because I can unscrew this, like so, pull this out, and you'll see now I have quite a wide space for this to go over my door. So I think finally I've got a door hanging hook that I'll be able to use. Now, of course, you're not, that's not how it's meant to be used. You're meant to use it with that adjustable clamp. But, um, I don't know, maybe just my doors here in New Zealand are a lot thicker than doors overseas. But anyway, the idea is you slot that on the top of your door. You can then use this pulley system, which may look confusing, but it's really not. You just simply clip that on the top and you can adjust the height. Of course, if you don't want to do that, you can stand it against a wall like I'm doing now, and of course you've got those thick rubber feet, so you're not going to damage your wall. Or you can get uh, one of the Red Light Rising stands. Now speaking of stands, Red Light Rising do sell two types of stands. They've got their uh, vertical stand, which supports up to six panels. So you can go two high and three across, which would end up in quite a large treatment area. Uh, personally, I've always thought that two high and two across is all you need, but I do know some companies like Juve and Biome Platinum LED and obviously Red Light Rising, you know, do support three wide and three high, which is massive. Uh, the stands from Red, Red Light Rising, both the horizontal and the vertical ones, cost $550. So that is, it's quite expensive, you know, typically the stands are around that three, four hundred dollar mark. So $500 is a lot, especially because this panel is quite expensive. Though it is, I think the um, vertical stand weighs about 20 odd kilos. So it is a solid, well built uh, stand, which is good to know. The horizontal stand is used for uh, hanging the lights over, overhead. So, you know, if you're lying on the ground or on a bed or on a massage table, uh, and that is also $550, but only supports two panels. And Red Light Rising also offer a professional installation and setup uh, package. It's quite expensive. Obviously, you know, there's a team, maybe one or two people come into your home or office. Um, and it is only available in some parts of the world. So, you know, personally, I don't think you'd need to use that unless you're outfitting a clinic and you've got multiple units and stands and you want it done all nicely. But, uh, you know, these, these units aren't hard to install and set up, which we'll be covering shortly. Finally, included in the box are these leaflets. Now, um, I call them leaflets because that's exactly what they are. You could argue that they're a manual, but 
I I wouldn't really go that far. So firstly, you have a little thank you sheet and a bit of a promo sheet. Uh, the thank you sheet is a four part quick, quick start guide on there. Um, and if you're familiar with the red light therapy, you really don't need a manual, like you just plug in and go, unless it's something like, I don't know, the new juice or the light path LED. Uh, so be sure to check my first impressions and full, full review video on that panel to see what I mean. But with a reasonably standard setup um, that the Advantage has, you know, if you've used panels before, it's literally plug it in and away you go. Of course, if you're doing a modular setup, then you may want to refer to the info sheets. Um, the other sheet here is your returns and warranty and, and safety information. And then the third and final sheet is your, I mean, effectively it's your instruction guide. Um, one page for how to set it up with the cables and um, control panel. And the other page is for how to connect multiple units. Really, that's all you need. Uh, I do know you can go online to the Red Light Rising website and download a manual. I haven't done that. I don't know if it's just the same as this or if it's got more information. You could argue that this is a bit of a letdown, especially compared to, you know, say like the Juve and I think Platinum LED. They have really nice, you know, A4 printed, high gloss sort of manuals um, that don't only go into how to set this up and how to use it, but also a bit more about red light therapy and, and um, you know, treatment times and that. All that information though is on the Red Light Rising website. They've got a really good website with all the, the good knowledge base and a good FAQ section. But again, you could argue for a high-end elite product like this. Um, yeah, it would have, would have only cost Red Light Rising a few more dollars to get pretty much that FAQ section of their website printed out into a little booklet. So you can, you know, you can have it here, you can read it uh, if you're new to red light therapy, or you can flick through it when you're using it, um, because that is a great thing about these panels. Um, you can still read or, you know, be on your phone when you're using them. Next up, we're going to look at warranty and support. So the Advantage series of panels from Red Light Rising come with an amazing five-year warranty uh, that's profound and unheard of in the red light therapy space, at least to my knowledge. I can't think off the top of my head of any other companies that offer a five-year warranty. It used to be a two-year standard and then three was the exceptional, like, wow, that's quite amazing. Now, you know, five years, that's incredible. I suppose though, when you are spending nearly $3,000 on a piece of technology, you do want that peace of mind uh, that it's gonna last. And if something does break or, or go faulty, then of course um, you wanna know you're gonna get it fixed or your money back. So five years is quite incredible. So well done there, Red Light Rising. They also have a 60 day trial period. So you can purchase this uh, panel, test it, try it, play around with it. If you're not happy with it, you send it back. Of course, you are paying the return shipping um, and they, uh, Red Light Rising do take a 15% restocking fee. So uh, some other companies have a 60 day period with a 20% restocking fee. Other companies have, um, 60 day periods with no restocking fee. So, you know, Red Light Rising that sort of sits in the middle there. Um, I suppose though, if you are wanting to gamble with red light therapy or if you're new to red light therapy, you may want to start with a smaller device, you know, like even a handheld device, which you can get for like a hundred, 200 bucks. Um, play around with that before jumping into the big, you know, three to $4,000 mark, uh, like we have here with the Advantage panel. Though, um, if you've seen all my stuff and looked at the science and, and the articles I've written on red light um, therapy, you'll know that, hey, it's, it's well researched and it is very, very effective. Finally, Red Light Rising do offer a free 20 minute call with their founders. You can do this prior to making a purchase. I'd assume you can do it after you've made a purchase as well. Um, you just head over to redlightrising.co.uk and you can book that call in. You can also pay to speak to a, a medical professional through Red Light, Red Light Rising and this particular professional is well versed in Red Light Therapy so they'll be able to help you with your, your needs and situation and maybe tailor a, a treatment protocol for you. So that's all cool. Okay, now for the fun stuff, we're gonna look at power and performance. So first up, let's look at the LEDs and wavelengths in this panel. So like I've said a few times now, 500 LEDs, they are uh, single chip LEDs and uh, three watt rated. So some new panels are coming out with the 5 watt LEDs, but I've tested both 5 watt and 3 watt LEDs, and I think to date the most powerful um, LEDs I've, I've tested were actually a 3 watt LED, not the 5. So it is going to be interesting to see how these um, LEDs do stand up. 
Now this particular unit has 660 and 850 nanometers. Unfortunately, that's the only option here with the Advantage series. Uh, they don't offer the multi-wave, you know, your 810s, your 930s, your 630s um, that a lot of panels are offering now. So for instance, Mito Red, they have their Mito Pro range with five, uh, five wavelengths. Biomax, Platinum LED Biomax range, they've always had the multi-wavelengths. Uh, light path LED, you can get multi-wavelengths. So that is a bit of a disappointment. Um, I'm unsure why Red Light Rising haven't included the multi-wavelengths for their premium product, whether it's cost saving or whether they they just don't think you need it. Uh, personally, I do like the, the extra wavelengths in the panel, and that's what I use myself. But um, yeah, maybe work, I can reach out to Red Light Rising and, and get some clarity around that decision. I'm now gonna test with my spectrometer here, I'm gonna test to see exactly what is coming out of here uh, from a wavelength point of view. And then of course we're gonna do the fun stuff and test power irradiance and calculated power output. Okay, so I've got everything set up. What I'm gonna do is fire up the panel. Uh, I'm gonna test the red light first, just enabling red light. I'll pull the camera down here onto the laptop and we'll be able to see um, what wavelengths are coming through and then we'll do the same with the near infrared. And re remember it should be, ideally the peak should be around that 660 mark for red and 850 for near infrared. All right, so I'm gonna turn this on, uh, red light first, let's go. Okay, so yes, you can see uh, the peak is 661.8 so um like i've if you've seen my other videos it's usually one or two nanometers off and just because it's not being on 660 you are getting all this other light uh actually right through if we go back and see what's over here you know you're getting that that first peak there at 652 and then it's jumping up right through to your 662 so that's the interesting thing with these panels it's not always it's not a laser, it's not a straight line at 660 and nothing to each side. So, you know, if for instance 658 is beneficial, you're actually getting a ton of wavelengths, a ton of power at 658. In fact, even all the way down to, you know, 640s um, through to 670 almost. Um, so now we're going to do the, the near infrared reading. And there we go. And we can see the peak there is coming out at 846. So it's a few points short of 850, which is the claim. But if we go over to 850, it's just starting to come down. So yeah, the peak is is a few points short. But um, yeah, again, it's it's pretty normal for what I've tested before. Okay, so now we're going to test power irradiance. Now, if you've seen some of my videos before, you'll know how I, how I do this. If it's the first time watching a review of mine. I've got a spectrometer here, um, I've got a ruler, six inch ruler. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test peak power uh, for three readings. We're gonna test overall peak power for both near infrared and the red light. We're gonna test peak power for red light. We're gonna test power for near infrared. Uh, we'll, we'll look at those numbers. So when I, when I say peak power, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm, I'm just moving around looking for that absolute peak. It's not the best reading because just if you find a peak at let's say 100 in one particular spot, but everything else is 40, you know, like, it, it, that peak doesn't give a true representation of what's going on across the whole panel. Uh, to do that, to find that fair representation, what I actually do is measure nine points, take an average, um, and then calculate it based on the surface area. So I do a bunch of tests and a bunch of calculations, and um, what I do with all this data as well is I'm putting together the ultimate red light therapy buyer's guide that's gonna go over my website alexfigures.com so be sure to be on my email list and you'll be notified when that goes live and I'm going to publish all these results in one big database effectively and you'll be able to search and compare every panel that I've tested and owned uh, I'm going to test them all and put all that data into there so you'll be able to go on and see how the red light rising advantage stands up uh, against the biomax or the gen 1 Jew, for instance um, so I'm really excited to publish it to get around to publishing that okay now back to this let's get testing so I won't be able to show you on here. What I do is I just read out the numbers uh, just because the light is too bright and I'm moving around. So I'm going to read out the peak power uh, for both of them first and then we're going to do the red and then the infrared. 
All right, so we got 50, we're in the mid 50s. These are milliwatts centimeter squared. 58, 59, 60. Uh, 60s, quite a few 60s. It's quite a nice steady reading going through here. There we go. So you're looking at that EE number at the top there. 60.792 and you can see the two uh, wavelengths here your red and the infrared now um typically when i move around this these panels you see quite a fluctuation so you'll see you know 40s and then 50s and then you might see a 60 and then back to 40. i was moving around here i started in the middle but even right on the edge it was high 50s 58 59 60 back to 58 even when I went up and down. So that was that was quite interesting. Whether that is because the beam angle on here, uh, the beam angle for this particular unit is 30 degrees, some other uh, panels have 60, whether it's that, like more concentration, concentrated, or um, what I'm assuming though, it's it's because of the tightly packed LEDs. You get more LEDs in a, in a more concentrated area, so you're getting a more stable, uh, blended um, irradiance, which is good, which is what you want. And I will be testing for hotspots soon as well, so that will reveal exactly what's going on. Okay, let's do the power now for red light. All right, so 33, 34, 34, 34, 34, 35, 8, 36 flat, 36, 2, 36, 36 is 36, 6. All right, so I actually ended up with a 37.1. Hopefully you can see this on screen. There we go, 37.1. So I have to be honest with you, that is a little bit disappointing. Uh, Red Light Rising have made a bold claim and it's still on their website that this is the most powerful panel out there and that they've um, improved all the components and drivers and it's meant to be a really high powered device and, and effectively that's what you're paying for. Now, on a per LED you know, peak power, uh, to put that 30, 37 reading into perspective, uh, you know, the light path LED um, panel I tested a few weeks ago, a month ago, was I think 48 for the red light range, uh, and the near infrared was even higher. Um, and I, I have tested other units as well, and they're also, you know, in the 30, 40 mark, easy. So that is a bit, a bit disappointing. What, what I do want to say though is, like I noticed with the overall reading, the numbers are pretty much consistent right through. Like everything was above 30s just as I moved around. It wasn't those massive ups and downs that I'm, I, I, that I'm used to seeing. So that is actually really cool. I mean, it's, it's why I don't necessarily like the peak reading as such, but so many people want to see it, so I include it. The interesting reading, the, the really good, uh, valuable reading that's going to be useful for making comparisons is going to be my um, total power output reading. So we'll get to that after I do the near infrared reading now. So let's do near infrared peak. So 23, 24, 24s, 25, 25, 25. 25.4. 25.4, you're looking at that EE line up the top there. So just like the red light reading, it is on the lower side. I mean, it's not low, it is a good, really high reading. Uh, but it is on the lower side compared to some of these other new panels that I'm testing. Just a little bit disappointing. Again though, you're getting that consistent reading throughout. Hey, so a quick update. Just before I was gonna publish this full review video, I actually received an email from the guys at Red Light Rising and that just had one of their uh, advantage panels tested from a, tested by an independent um, light testing company. Now the panel they sent in wasn't this, it wasn't the 1500, it was the Advantage 900, which is slightly smaller, but uses the same LED, same technology inside, the same drivers, and all that good stuff. So effectively it's the same, it's the same width, it's just not as long. Now they sent through the official report, and I'll share this with you uh, in the video here as well. Now what's interesting is the numbers are pretty pretty close to what I was getting on my you know two three thousand dollar spectrometer device here so if you remember my peak was just over 60 uh, nearly 61 milliwatts per centimeter squared the data that the um, lab came back for their 150 mil uh, peak test was 65 milliwatts 65 and a half milliwatts over centimeter squared so a few points out but remember these guys are professional laboratories I'm a biohacker with a, you know, two thousand, three thousand dollar gadget, right? But still, I mean, I think that's pretty good, uh, pretty, pretty similar. Um, the neat thing about this graph, uh, the report, is it also shows peak P 
peak power and um, peak wavelengths and they will line up with my testing as well so we know we're on point there but this also shows power uh, levels at 100 mils right out to one and a half thousand um, mils which is you know it's interesting if you're curious about that sort of stuff so yes this lab data was ever so slightly higher than mine um, but there's a lot of variables at play here I mean again all I'm doing is blue tacking on a ruler at the right measurement and working around you know it's not super this isn't hardcore science right it's giving you a rough idea but I do that across the board for all panels so hey um you know it's 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 kind of equal for everyone but I thought I'd mention that because you know it does show that yes my my meter is is pretty reliable pretty accurate um, but at the same time if you want the hardcore numbers then you should be going out and getting a lab test and I, I'd love to do that with all these panels but it would cost me thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars anyway I just wanted to add that in there for your reference what I'm gonna do now is measure nine points uh, to the same roughly the same points on all panels uh, six on the edges six through the middle I'm gonna take an average of that and we'll share that reading which is probably more um, of a reliable comparison then we're going to figure out the surface area and do estimated total power output in watts all right let's go do the nine readings now okay so after doing those nine readings i had an average of 52.8 milliwatts per centimeter squared which again is a little bit lower than some of the other panels i have tested now um, calculating the total power output what i do is i take that that average reading which effectively is saying that's on average no matter where you are on the surface of this panel that's what you're going to be that's the radiance level you're receiving so now I've uh, multiplied that reading by the surface area and that gives us a total power output of 95 watts uh, a big number yes but a little bit lower than I expected especially yeah especially given the price point so Again, I've tested some smaller panels, you know, with less than 300 LEDs and I've had total power outputs around that 100 mark, some of them even above 100. So given this has 500 LEDs, uh, is a lot larger panel, you know, size wise and um, is a lot more expensive. Yeah, you have to say that's a bit of a blow for red light rising in this panel. Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, before we get into the next category, I want to test... Um, what is draw and also do my hotspot test. So let's do the hotspot test first. Okay, so what I'm doing here with the hotspot test is I have the panel uh, six inches. I have the panel six inches from the wall and I'm going to turn it on. We're going to see if you can spot any hotspots. And I have to admit, it's pretty good. It's, it's really good actually. So you can see how that light is hitting, you know, there's a four, five, six inch concentrated spot in the middle here, and then it drops off on the edges quite, quite dramatically. But there's no real hot spots. Now, um, one of the best examples for a bad hot spot panel is the Gen 1 Biomax panel. Um, where you really see different colors. Part of the reason the Biomax wasn't that good though is they do use multiple wavelengths, so so not all it, so the light is kind of spread out a little bit more because they've got to get multiple lights in there, multiple wavelengths in there. Obviously with the red light rising, you've only got your 660 and uh, 850. So, so that is a good result for red light rising. And to be honest, I expected that after I was doing those power irradiance readings because it was nice and consistent throughout. So that is a good win for red light rising. Let's test the wattage, wattage draw, then we'll look at value. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the wattage draw, which is simply how many watts the unit pulls. Now I've got a watt meter plugged in here. Um, you won't be able to see the screen, so I'll just have to read out the numbers that I see. Okay, so we had 1,083 watts when both the red and the infrared bulbs are going. Uh, we had 600 watts when the red light was going on its own and 503 when it was just the near infrared reading. So again, um, if you're wondering why I'm measuring this, once that buyer's guide goes live on my website, you'll be able to compare all this and some people want to geek out on, on all these numbers. 
Okay, let's plug in all these numbers into my calculations and we're gonna work out the value uh, cost per LED and cost per total power output. Okay, I've crunched the numbers. So what I'm doing now is looking at the discounted value. So that's the price after you use discount code Alex. Looking at the price you pay um, per LED. So that worked out to be $5.28. $5.28. Effectively, you're spending $5.28 for one LED. Um, put that, to put that in perspective, the light path LED and some other panels I've tested were all around, uh, actually they were all under $5. So straight away, we're, we're already up in that higher price point. The main figure I really like looking at though is the dollar per watt. Okay, so that's dollar per not the watts I was just testing from a draw point of view, but from the irradiance, the, the output, the power output. Now that comes out to 28.1. That means you're spending 28 point, $28 for one watt of irradiance, which is, which is very, very high. Um, yeah, like three or four times higher than some of the other panels I've tested. And that's simply because of the large price point on, the, on this panel and um, the less than amazing power output readings. So, that's so why I keep saying you spend a lot of money for something that's unfortunately not that good on the power front. Anyway, let's move on to EMF testing. So I've got my Cornet electro smog meter here and this tests electric, microwave and magnetic fields. And then we're also going to test the sound. I think the sound reading should be pretty good because it, it does seem a little bit quieter than some other panels I've tested. Okay, so I'll test electric field first. And there is absolutely no change on the electric field. On the magnetic reading, it jumped up to 0.1 micro Teslas. Now that's still in the green range here, which is the safe range. Uh, to put that in perspective, the background reading is 0.03. So, um, you know, there was a tiny little spike there, but it was still well and truly in the safe zone. Of course, if you get closer than the six inch, that does go up, but I wouldn't be concerned about that. Uh, finally, we'll do the microwave. Uh, I don't expect there to be any reading here because there's no transmitter built in, but let's just quickly test that. And there is no change for the microwave reading either, which is great. So to be honest, from an EMF point of view, you have nothing to worry about with this. Um, sure, if you're getting close, that uh, magnetic reading might get a little bit higher, but at six inch, we're still in the safe zone. Let's now look at decibels. It peaked at 53.8 decibels, which is actually, um, it's, I thought it might be a little bit lower than that, but uh, that's not a bad reading, and to be honest, it doesn't really bother me. It's more the pitch of the sound that I don't like. Um, of course, it would it'd be awesome if they were super silent, but uh, with the power that's going into these units, you need the fan. Uh, it's more the pitch, like some of them are quite a ear piercing whir, um, this isn't too bad. You do have six fans on here. All right, next up, what I want to do is test the flicker rate here of the Advantage 1500 by Red Light Rising. I've got my spectrometer, which also tests flicker. Now, there's two numbers I'm looking for here. Uh, I'm looking for the flicker frequency, which is measured in hertz, which shows how many times a second the brightness on an LED changes or, or a light changes. And then also the flicker percent, which shows the drop off in light intensity uh, each time there is a change, if there is any change. Now I say if because um, in 2019 when I did my body panel comparison series, uh, out of all the panels I had, Red Light Rising, their panel, which wasn't this Advantage one, it was their full stack panel, was the only panel that had no flicker. It was completely flicker free. So I know that got a lot of interest, a lot of attention because some people were very passionate, excuse me, about um, flicker. So um, I'm expecting this new generation panel from Red Light Rising will also have no flicker. And um, I should also note that a lot of the newer panels I'm testing now in 2021 have no flicker as well. So it's obviously uh, something that manufacturers and, and these red light therapy companies have put some, um, or have, have uh, you know, have been aware that, oh geez, they were falling behind in that regard. So it's good to see uh, from a consumer point of view. So let's test this now and uh, I'll read out the numbers shortly. There is absolutely no reading for the flicker frequency or the flicker percent flat line in at zero. So that is very good to see and uh, though to be honest it doesn't surprise me but that is a good thing. All right so next up we're going to look at operation. How easy is it to run, uh, to set up, you know to get into the advanced functions. Let's come around to the side and I'll show you. Okay so in regards to getting this set up it's very easy. You simply get the power point, plug it in, power cable sorry, plug it in, turn the main switch on, 
and you hear it beeps to when it turns on and then from there it's really just one button and you're away simple as that so very easy to get up and set up and, and get going if you just want the light on as fast as possible uh, as for the buttons on the side uh, if we work our way up at the bottom here you see you've got the LEDs indicating what wavelengths are enabled and running so at the moment it's set to both red and near infrared I do like that because the near infrared light is invisible there are some panels that don't have this function and I found out later after a 20 minute session that I only had the red light going which is a bummer um, actually if we skip to the top now you've got a timer this is an old school screen you know some of these newer screens have nice like um, you know quite nice screens um, this is more of an older LCD screen which is a bit of a bummer but hey it does the job uh, mode button here that changes between what wavelengths are selected so at the moment we have near infrared red and both time changes the time it goes up one minute at a time all the way up to 20 and then works its way back up again uh, I don't really like these buttons there's no vibrational give to it like I like more of a physical touch button uh, though it's not as bad as the light path LED panel um, which is just horrible um, you do get the beep so you know it's going up but it, it's a bit time consuming like if it's set to 5 and you want to get all the way to 20 oh jeez you know it, you can't just rapid press it you can't oh you can hold it there we go I didn't know that okay so you can just hold it down which is good um, yeah hey just not into the world but I just thought I'd mention that and then of course okay and off we go and the timer counts down once it runs out it uh, turns the unit off so overall I mean it's pretty simple to use in fact um, I like things uh, you know some of the panels out there are very confusing to run and it you know it gets me going a little bit uh, get a bit frustrated with it whereas this is a nice easy to use design uh, it is an improvement from their full stack design which didn't have all this built in a timer and all that um, but saying that it is still lagging compared to some of the other control panels we have on the market today okay so we're coming up to the end of this video before I wrap up I do want to share my thoughts uh, and compare it to some other products on the market and then of course go through my likes and dislikes as I've been using red light therapy for so long now it's not like I use one of these panels and straight away I'm like oh my god you know my aches and pains are gone or I'm sleeping better or recovering better because yeah I really need well the thing is I know red light therapy works and most of these products I mean all of them all of them are going to work it's just a matter of what bells and whistles do you want what has the best value what is the safest to use so there's been no radical like oh my god I use this and my cognitive function improved or anything uh, nothing at least that I can tell and plus it's only been two or three weeks one other thing I should have mentioned earlier is Red Light Rising do offer a rent a light fun rent a light function, which is quite neat. I haven't seen any other companies do this, so you can go in and just rent one of their lights. I think you can get the smaller ones. You know, you spend a little bit of money, try it at home, or maybe you've had an injury and you want to try it and don't want the commitment to a big um, financial outlay. You know, that's a great option, and you can learn more about that at RedLightRising.co.uk. So before I share my concluding thoughts and go through the pros and cons of this panel, I did want to talk about other alternative products both from Red Light Rising and from their competitors. So within the Red Light Rising range you have the Advantage 900 which is what I mentioned earlier it's a smaller version of this only 300 LEDs instead of the 500. It's a thousand dollars cheaper though um, and of course it's it's not quite as tall. By the way the 900 will be featured in my 2021 body panel comparison video which should be out soon I hope. I know I've been saying this for ages now so um, but be sure to subscribe and you'll be notified as soon as I do have updates on that uh, because this is a little bit bigger this goes into the mega class uh, the 900 is in the body class um, you could also go down to the full stack which is their more budget base line uh, of red light therapy panels that will save you uh, it's, it's, it's actually a third of the price of this but you're only getting 200 LED so it's you know it's a lot smaller uh, you don't get the timer and a few more, a uh, few of the advanced features such as the mo module support and the stand option. Um, I am assuming that the basic, uh, the full stack is also less powered, but uh, I, I think they've updated that slightly from when I tested it, so don't quote me on that. Otherwise, you can go bigger. You can go up to the Advantage XL, which comes in at $12,000 and has 1,600 LEDs. Yes, 1,600 LEDs. Now, um, at that price point, you're probably better off just getting three of these 
and a stand and uh yeah and i mean you're coming in under 10 grand that way and you're getting 1500 leds or you spend 12 grand and it's all in one uh but to be honest from a price per led point of view that's getting quite expensive so yeah i mean i don't know it's hard to justify that sort of money on a red light therapy panel to be honest but hey that's an option as for competitive products well if you look at mito red and the platinum led panels uh you can get their 300 led panels for about maybe under half the price of this yes it's less leds but uh, i think the power output on those panels is actually going to be the same if not higher than this uh, and i will be testing those panels in time so be sure to subscribe i think next up on my schedule is the mito mito red mito pro 1500 so i'll be doing this full test that i've done here with the red light rising panel with with that so be sure to subscribe for that um so for half the price you know you get a few you get a smaller treatment area but um yeah it's probably a bit of value for money in fact you could get two of them two biomaxes or two mito red panels and um and get the stand and clip them all together and you're probably still going to be spending less than you would if you bought this outright so you know plus you get in the multi-wave those panels with uh, platinum led and mito red have uh four or five wavelengths with this only have two so you know it's you got to factor on all these things when you um when it comes to buying a red light panel if you're fixed on getting an all-in-one panel you know you don't want to clip them together and you just want one big panel uh then you could look at rug uh rug red light now they have their rug mx panel now this comes out at 600 leds which is 100 more than this and um it actually is a few hundred dollars cheaper than the red light rising panel as well though i'm yet to test that panel so i don't know what the power output is like and i don't know what the performance is like and all that so uh hey it's just another thing to check out though while you are shopping around i think that's pretty much a wrap uh what in summary i do want to share what i do like about this panel and what i don't like let's start with what i like what i like is the warranty five years warranty is you know that's it's a whole new level in terms of red light therapy panels and it's it's good to know you know you're spending a couple grand you know hey if anything goes wrong you've got that five-year warranty um which is quite amazing so that's what on red light rising for for utilizing that five-year warranty period i know it's going to put a bit of pressure on some other companies now which is good secondly i do like the fact that you can get on a on a free call with the founders i know light path led do something similar um you know i think it's a really great great feature and something that the smaller companies can do you know i don't think Juve would ever allow a free 20 minute call with their founders because um they're just you know they're, from a sales point of view like they just they'd be so busy so it is a nice little uh value add that some of these smaller companies can do and you know you might get on that call and talk about other things not related to red light therapy you might talk about sleep or biohacking so that's that's really cool but of course if you're curious to know what panel is best for you or how to get the most out of these panels then those those calls are going to be invaluable as well so, um thirdly i do like the design i think it looks nice uh the black design with the smaller led casings if that's the pro proper term um you know it does look nice hanging or leaning against the wall so yeah another good pro on that front oh one of the positive i forgot to mention about this panel was how consistent the light power is or the radiance is across the panel um i mentioned that as i was testing as, as i was looking for peak power and we saw it with the hotspot test as well it's a nice blend of light it's nicely balanced uh is the right word there's no massive peaks and, and hot spots and and um weak points which is good it means no matter where you're positioning yourself in front of this panel you are getting a nice balanced treatment here so that is something that's really good and i think it's going to be something that we're going to see other panels having to you know having to really um improve because some panels might have some awesome numbers from a power point of view but that light's all over the place so as for the dislikes well the first thing is for an elite panel and a high price panel you're only getting two wavelengths uh i really do like those other wavelengths that have been incorporated in some of these newer panels so that is a bit of a bummer i know some other companies offer it as a add-on light path led you can you can go with the base 660 and 850 or spend more and get the multi-wave uh lightweight likewise with mito red the control panel is on the simpler side it's not necessarily a bad thing because as i mentioned before i do like simple but um you know some of these new panels coming out have some advanced features whether it's pulsing or you know syncing with your phone to do fa fancy things or ambient mode background mode um built-in alarm clocks what else do we have out there uh touch screen panels all these sort of things so yeah you, know, you could say at a three thousand dollar price point you would be expecting something a little bit more advanced than what's on there 
Finally, and this is the biggest letdown of all, is just the value. It's a lot of money for something that isn't, it's just a lot of money. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. It's a lot of money when you can get other products that have higher power output, more wavelengths, uh, more bells and whistles um, for the same or if not cheaper price. So yeah, because of that, I don't know, like it's, it's really, it's a bummer. I mean, if this was, you know, a thousand dollars cheaper, it would be a really good really good all-round panel and it will probably do well uh, when I do compare this panel uh, to other panels in my buyer's guide and, and future comparison test. It will be interesting to see how the 900 performs in my comparison. I would say based on these numbers now it's probably not going to replicate Red Light Rising's third place that it got a few years ago just because the price has gone up and um, the power power is falling behind now when we compare it to some of the panels on the market. Overall though, if you're in the UK or in Europe and you want a local, uh, you want to use a local company and you don't want to worry about customs and, and having to potentially send a panel back, you know, across to America if something, something goes wrong, then Red Light Rising is something you should check out. Um, and the Vantage panels, you know, are great products. They are great panels. They are going to do what you want a Red Light Therapy panel to do, help with the recovery and all the other good things that Red Light Therapy does. It's just, at the end of the day, it just comes down to where are you best to spend your money. Can you spend your money elsewhere and get the same or a better product? Hopefully this video has helped you make more of an informed decision and answer some of those questions. Again, I will be doing some more comparisons and publishing a ton of data over at alexfigures.com, so be sure to jump on my email list. If you did want to buy one of these panels, head over to redlight redlightrising.co.uk and enter code alex, A-L-E-X, that will save you 5%. It gives me a little bit of a cutback, but it helps me to produce these videos and do more of them. So. Uh, I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to pack up and we're going to move on to the next review and I'm going to start testing that panel in a couple weeks time we'll be publishing that and again I believe that's going to be the Mito Red Mito Pro so stay tuned for that.